China's growth forecasts for the next quarter have now been cut in half. Goldman Sachs is expecting 2.3 in Q3. It had been almost 6% before. China's been at the bright spot for many sectors. Goldman says travel, entertainment and catering could all take a hit. Oh, that might be a statement of the obvious. David Hunt is the chief executive of the asset managers PGIM. He joins me from New York. OK, now this is interesting because China's recovery has to a large extent dragged, maybe not the US, but has dragged large parts of the global economy up faster again uh, in a way that the US has as well. But if China slows even marginally because of Delta, what happens? Well, it's an excellent point, Richard. I think you're seeing uh, economists around the world scramble now to uh, begin to rise down some of their uh, overly optimistic forecasts of growth over the next, uh, the next year. Without a doubt, you're seeing that for China, but you're also seeing that uh, in, in Europe and to some extent here, here in the US. But I don't think we should lose sight of the big picture. And the big picture is that, um, you know, we have had a remarkable economic recovery. The U.S. certainly, I think, hit probably peak uh, growth in the second quarter, and we expect Europe to hit peak growth in the third quarter. We will have a very strong level of growth overall for the full year. OK, so let's talk what you do. Asset allocation. Now, as I came into this year, we were talking a lot about it was going to be a strong year for equities, which it has been in the first half. But as Delta hits us in the second half, do we play defensive? So, Richard, the dominant theme of the investment landscape today is negative real interest rates right around the globe. And as long as that remains true, you are going to see a dramatic hunt for yield. Anything that can outperform cash is going to do relatively well. So risk assets, whether that be equities or we see the same thing in high yield, we see the same thing in private credit, we see the same thing in real estate, are going to be underpinned um, by those rates. And so what will really change the game is much less, I think, uh, the GDP picture and much more a change in the Fed policy uh, around rates. And that's why so much focus on that. Would you expect a minor tinkering that we all know is going to happen? For instance, the tapering that will take place. Uh, you've got, first of all, you've got tapering and then you've got lack of reinvestment. And then finally, you'll get to a rate rise at the policy level. Would you expect dislocation or just a gentle rebalancing to account? So for us, our main focus is a labor market. And I think to understand the Fed or even the ECB, the real focus has to be on what happens to the labor market. And we can see a couple of different scenarios. In one scenario, actually, we continue to add jobs at a reasonable mm -hmm. pace over the rest of this year. And actually, we get back to a position of reasonable employment, in which case I think the Fed does move along the path that you suggested. I can imagine an alternative uh, view, and actually we're seeing more and more evidence of this, that actually a number of people decide they don't want to go back to their old job. And by the way, a lot of the employers have decided that they don't need as many workers because productivity is actually going up. And in that case, we actually have a labor market that doesn't cure. And if that happens, right. we think you'll see a more dovish step. I want to finish with a slightly different area. In a balanced portfolio, now you remember, this is what we were always taught, balance your portfolios, don't take too much risk, make sure you have something for a rainy day, bonds versus stocks, all of the, and, and if you really like it, a bit of gold as well. Where do you think crypto comes in today's, port, in, in today's private investor portfolio? Well, at the, at the risk of admitting my age, I also grew up in this industry when basically the 60-40 portfolio between stocks and bonds was the way to think about the world. But, you know, the last 15 years have really changed that. And part of that has been the dramatic crackdown that we had after the GFC. Mm -hmm. Banks really stopped taking as much risk. The regulators certainly reined them in. And so we've seen a dramatic increase in other asset classes 
whether that be the rise of private credit, whether that be a lot more allocations to private equity, whether that's infrastructure funds. And so for us, as we work with clients, we are actually seeing a dramatic expansion of the range of types of assets that mm. they're investing. Most of them are not at this point moving into crypto. That remains largely a retail orientation, large institutions not so much. But we are seeing a real change in the old concept of 60-40. And you're right to point that out. And we must talk about that in the future, sir, as we continue our discussions Thanks. on Quest Means Business. Very grateful. Thank you, sir.